My name is Marlon Bills. I'm with a company called Hammer Mills International. We were formerly known as Osborne Engineering for about 35 years. Uh, in the past year, we uh, merged with three other companies. So I went from being president of a small company to a managing member of a, a much larger company. We uh, evolved into a company that works solely in the metal recycling industry. And our biggest uh, systems and pieces of equipment that we build are for shredding automobiles. A shredder is a, uh, it's a large box and inside of the box is a rotating mass of very hard steel and on this mass of steel which we call a rotor there are some loose swinging hammers that are shaped like a Liberty Bell and as they go around they are fairly close to a set of grates that have holes in the grates. When you feed a flattened automobile into the shredder uh, it will bite off pieces and shred the car. It takes you longer to explain how it works than it does to shred about five or six cars. Uh, you can shred two or three cars per minute very easily. We make the shredders, we make all the belt conveyors, the air pollution control devices that have to be attached. Uh, we build the complete system that includes the magnetic separation. The uh, first piece of equipment we ever supplied in the industry was the air pollution control. When a shredder grinds up a car or any other kind of metal, it creates smoke and dust. And we have machines that will uh, contain that. Um, we have to pass all of the different states have their own codes that we have to meet. When we sell a piece of equipment, we guarantee it to meet that code that applies. I was uh, raised in Red Oak, Iowa, a little town, <clears throat> about 8,000 people, southwest Iowa. I was a uh, draftsman up there. I spent a couple years in the Army. I was on about three years working for a small company, and I saw the, uh, the lure of being a manufacturer's rep, where they got to travel the United States and drive a company car and eat, eat on the company and drink on the company, and, and uh, so I started looking for a uh, uh, position somewhere else and Osborne Engineering was looking for a draftsman slash service salesman and uh, I came down and interviewed and got the job, took the job with Osborne Engineering at an enormous salary of $12,000 per year, $1,000 a month, which was about 40% oh, better than I was doing back in Iowa. I felt rich. I've been married for uh, 43 years now, and uh, my wife and I both loved Tulsa the minute we got here. Our company uh, sells to worldwide customers, but we love Tulsa because, well, one practical reason is it's centrally located for travel. We can get to about any, any of our customers in the same amount of travel time. Um, we like the weather compared to Iowa. Uh, Everybody from Tulsa knows that all the Tulsa people are extra friendly and uh, it's a great place to live and we, we raised our one child and it's a great place for that too. I uh, started playing guitar back when I was in sixth grade. I took about six lessons which did me absolutely no good. Um, I did like all the other kids. I, I just hatcheted my way through learning tunes. When I was in high school, I uh, played in my first band. It was called the Nightcaps with two Ks. And uh, we played in a storefront window of a local bar called the Honky Tonk Lounge. I think we knew about six or seven songs. We played over and over. When I went in the Army and got married and did like most people, I put the guitar down in the closet, didn't touch it for probably 15 years. Started playing again about, I don't know, seven or eight, nine, ten years ago. Uh, now I'm in Tulsa. There's a million really good guitar players in this town. So I got to thinking, you know, if I want to play some gigs sometime, I'd have a better chance playing the bass. So I, I, and I had an urge to learn how to play the bass. So I've been working on that for the last uh, four years, let's say. About uh, two years ago, I connected up with my uh, the leader of the band, Joseph Glaud. He's a local musician who is becoming very well known as a, a jazz player, and uh, that's 
become a lot of fun. We're working on a new album now as we speak. Since we emerged, we, we're now building shredders more often. Uh, over the years from the early 70s all the way till a few years ago, we were designing mostly the downstream equipment, which separates all the different kinds of metals. So they can be taken back to the, either the steel mills or the foundries for the uh, non-ferrous metals, aluminum, copper, brass, zinc. I've probably got 150 different American customers and 30 or 40 worldwide customers. The uh, scrap metal market currently is at one of its all-time highs. It's, it, the value of scrap metal is based upon the usage of steel throughout the world. Um, and it's kind of a volatile market, but uh, we've had some of our lowest prices for shredded steel a few years ago, say $100 per ton. Right now it's at one of the highest prices, it's almost $500 per ton after it's been processed. Um, that means the business of uh, selling equipment to these processors is uh, very good right now. We expect the new, newly merged company to grow very well.